I'm going to tell you uh, the story of how things happened that I'm standing here in front of you today in this room. I was not political. I was not politically active at all. And if I want to give a chronological just account of the events that just accumulated to me being here, which is a great honor for me, I should start exactly this very same day, four years ago, March 21st, 2009, the new Iranian year, no rules had started, my life was beautiful, everything was perfect, and just nothing was missing. Um, I was with my family and friends, Iran was moving toward the election, which for many was just an aspiration to change and reform and the beginning for the long desired movement and strive of Iranian nation for democracy. I was not involved in that. I was um, just pursuing my academic career. I was a university lecturer, a full-time faculty member, and I was also the head of a technical college affiliated to the university. I had 1,200 students, I had my own staff, and I had just everything that just as an Iranian woman I could strive for in that particular moment of time in my life. Fast forward three months later, exactly the same day, June 21st, 2009, my life changed forever. During the demonstrations, another Iranian girl with a similar name like me, Neda Ava Sultan, was shot to death on the streets of Tehran. Somebody searched for her name on the internet, came across my Facebook profile without double checking. It took my face, my profile picture, and my name, gave it to the international media. Nobody double checked that. So within seconds, my face and my name went viral worldwide, uh, worldwide as the face of opposition and the face of just green movement. Fast forward, one month later, July 21st, 2009, I applied political asylum in Germany. What happened was that the Iranian government was so desperate with the scandal of killing Nerawa Sultan and just it drew more and more attention around the clock that they were just desperately trying to find a way to wash their hands off the blood of that innocent woman. And I was the only pop piece of this puzzle which was fitting into their plot of disclaiming and saying that and, and denouncing the death of that poor innocent woman. So they hunted me down and they wanted me to go public and say I was here, I was fine and here is the photo you have seen, here is the name, I'm alive. I did not do that and they turned against me and they charged me with treason against the national security of my homeland. In Iran, treason can, I'm not saying I was charged with that, but just treason can eventually result in death sentence. So in 12 days I went from being a silent academic to uh, just betrayer of the national security of my homeland. I escaped and as I said, within a month, July 21st, 2009, I sought political asylum here in Germany. The most horrible thing about being a refugee is having no perspective in life. Is thinking that everything that you have worked hard for, everything that you have desired for, and you have fought for, and you have achieved it, is thrown into trash can, and you have no control over it. Nobody listens to it. International media knew that the photo did not belong to her. Just the same, they kept broadcasting it because it was breaking news and they did not want to lose the momentum at my cost. So, as I said, the most scary part and the most horrible part of living the life of a refugee, no matter who you are, no matter what your background is, is that you have no perspective in life. <coughs> Being the teacher that just I am, um, I started teaching alphabets to other refugees at the refugee camp where I was in Germany. So I went from teaching just T.S. Eliot and just, I don't know, Jonathan Swift and Sir Philip Sidney and philosophy and critical thinking and writing to teaching ABCD, German way, ABCD, to other refugees who did not even have that just, that little bit of initiative that I had. 
It was a very rewarding experience, but it was a very, very disturbing experience for me. Rewarding in the sense that the other refugees were so happy that they had a chance to learn to read and write. But for me, it was just another indication of, Neta, what are you doing here? What is it? Is this all that your life has been about? What are you doing here? So it was really difficult for me from teaching Ties Aviv to teaching Aved Sede, although I kept doing that because it was something that gave me meaning. Talking about perspective and talking about the contribution that Scholar Rescue Fund um, has made to my new life, I must say that in 2011, I, in 2010, I gave an interview, among other interviews about my case, to the French newspaper Le Monde and just a, a series of events led to me being in touch with Scholar Rescue Fund. I applied for a grant, received the grant and just that helped me begin or relaunch my academic career. I moved to the States to the, the year of 2012, last year. I was at Montclair State University, Montclair, New Jersey of, with a fellowship on women's rights in Iran, women's and gender studies. And then, just at the end of that program, I received a, a renewal of my fellowship, which I was not able to follow because I had, again, as a refugee, I was not able to stay in the United States without risking my status here in Germany. So I decided to come back, and I had, again, once again, the great help and support of Scholar Rescue Fund, who started uh, just trying to find a relocation for me, and then just Freie Universität stepped in and accepted to host me. It is a great honor for me to be here, and I'm really thankful because now, in this moment, I have that perspective. And I think it is very important for people who are sitting here, people who are in position of power, relevant power, just to think that people like me, people like my other colleagues, other scholars who have received this uh, support from Scholar Rescue Fund or Scholars at Risk, it is very important to give academics who are desperately in need of such uh, support a chance because as humans we all deserve to have a perspective in life. And since we are in an academic just environment right now, as an academic, if you do not have the possibility of practicing what you have so hard worked for, life means nothing. So to have a perspective is very important. And I'm sure that many, many scholars who are at risk need the support of universities in just in more progressive and more democratic countries um, to have a chance to have a perspective and to be hopeful that one day life will be normal again. Thank you.